worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you.
stop, you never stop working. your Bibles or open your Bible app on your phone, pull it up on Bible Gateway, and turn with me to Psalm 111. Grab your Bible. We are just going to take a couple minutes and wait on the Lord, and we're going to do that by giving him free worship, our own songs, our own words, and then we're also going to do that by worshiping with a psalm. We're going to read it together, and then we are going to worship with with scripture. We're going to worship with the word of God. Psalm 111. I'm going to read it and I want you just to follow along with me. I'm in the New Living Translation. Here we go. Verse 1 says, praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. He gives food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. All he does is just and good and all his commandments are trustworthy they are forever true to be obeyed faithfully with integrity he has paid a full ransom for his people he has guaranteed his covenant with them forever what a holy awe-inspiring name he has fear of the lord is the foundation of true wisdom all who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom Praise Him forever. Praise Him forever. What I want you to do right now is I want you just to look over that psalm. Don't look at me. Look at your Bible. Look through that psalm. I want you to find a scripture that inspires you to bring praise to God. Find that scripture. Find that verse right here in Psalm 111. Find a verse. Maybe it's His righteousness never fails. Maybe it's how gracious and merciful is He How great and merciful is our God. He gives to those who need. He's just and good. Find that verse. And I want you to think about what it means. And then I want you to say it to him. And then I want you to sing it to him. Oh, come on. Find those words. You can find more than one verse. All you do is just and good. All you do is just and good. I'm singing out verse 7. All you do is just and good, God. All you do is just and good. Oh, I can trust your word. I can trust your commands. Oh, you're a trustworthy God. All of your ways are just and good. All of your ways are just and good. And I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. Oh, I will praise you. Now begin to add your own words, your own songs. Come on, right where you're at, right in your house, right from your couch, right from your car, right from wherever you are walking and listening. Come on, just begin to let your praise just pour out of your mouth, your song. Oh, I love you, God. Your song, partnering with the psalm, with the scripture. Yeah, oh, I worship you, God. Oh, we worship you, God. Oh, you friends. Come on, just 30 more seconds. Just pour out your praise. Just begin to speak his praise. Begin to declare who he is. You are just, you are good, you are righteous. In all of your ways, oh, way maker, miracle worker. Oh, you're the one, you're the only one. There's no other name, there's no other name, there's no other God like our God. No other name like God.
want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. More of you, more of you. And right now, we're just going to start. Just take one minute. I know we've been doing a lot of things off script. We're going to sing a song all together here in just a moment. But we're right now, we're waiting on him. We're waiting in his presence. Look, this is why you logged in today. This is what you're here for, the presence of God. And if you just came in right here, we're just waiting on the Lord. You just position your mind and your heart before him. Oh, we wait on you. We wait on you. Oh, we wait on you, God, to walk into the room, to come into our lives. We welcome you. We welcome you. Come and do what only you Lord of Lords, oh, we just want to worship you like you're in the room, like you're in the room. We just want to pour out our praise like you're in the room. King of kings and Lord of Lords, King of kings and Lord of Lords, we worship you, we worship you. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. holy one we join with all of heaven singing holy 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 we join with all creation singing holy 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 oh come on cry out holy 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 is the lord oh holy is the lord holy is the lord holy 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 we will praise your name we will praise your name forever. We will praise your name, Jesus. We will praise your name forever. With all that we are, with all that we have, we will praise your name forever. Thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus.
relationship with you. What a gift um, you are to us, God, and we thank you um, for every good and perfect thing that you give us. And I thank you for this time, God, that we got to, to worship you. We got to cast our cares on you. And God, we thank you for your word, that it is true, and that um, that we can live by it. And so we, yeah, we just give you all praise and all thanks for what you are doing and what you will continue yeah. to do in our lives, because you are faithful, God. You are faithful to your word, and you keep your promises to us. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name, amen. Well, that was a great time of worship yes. this morning. It was awesome. I am so thankful for our worship team and all that they do for us. But right now is my favorite part yes. of the service. It's time to mingle. So yes. get out your phone and text someone. Yes, you get a text. You get a text. We all get a text. Yes. <laughs>
Hey, good morning, everybody. We're so glad you're back with us this week as we get ready to head into the second part of our series that we're doing here on the journey. Uh, but before we do that, I want to take just a moment and um, just pause as a reminder for us as a church. And, and on this Memorial Day, uh, take a moment to just remember all that's been sacrificed for us. Uh, we have so many incredible freedoms and liberties in this country. Uh, we get to live in just an amazing, beautiful place. And that was purchased for us through the lives of many people who sacrificed themselves uh, while serving in our armed forces. And so we just want to take a moment and just remember that. We know that there's some of you out there that had family members uh, that were a part of that. Yeah. And uh, we just want to say thank you from River Valley and from our families. Uh, thank you so much for the sacrifice uh, that you've made in that. Um, it's an incredible country that we get to live in. Yeah. We are have our own problems as a nation. We know that for sure, but it's still one of the best places in the world to live. And so we're just grateful and we want to celebrate that today on this Memorial Day. I also just want to uh, uh, bring us back into kind of the mm -hmm. space that we're in. Last week, we talked about one-to-one -one and what it looked yeah. like to help yeah. people to know God, mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit of a different perspective of how we jumped into uh, the know God component yeah. for us. And we're talking big four, and we'll get into that mm -hmm. here in a second. Uh, but man, I, I really hope that you engaged with the app that we presented to you guys last week. If you did not get a chance to do that, jump online. Uh, download that app. It is a phenomenal tool. Our family had a blast this week getting to use it as our devotional times together. We learned a lot, talked a lot together. Got and, saved again. Uh, got saved again. <laughs> uh, but just a really, really, really great resource. And we want to encourage you to have that um, and be familiar with that so that you can help people as we help to connect them with God. And that means you, as you connect them with God, helping them to take yeah. their next steps. Yep. Yeah. We've, uh, this whole series is talking about uh, how each of us has been commissioned by God to be a disciple, to be someone who follows after yeah. God with our life. Uh, but not only that, it's really clear in scripture that God has asked us to not only love him, but to love other people. Yeah. And so part of being a disciple is to actually help other people yeah. go on that journey too. Take yeah. that, take people and help them in their journey of, of learning to know God more. And that's what we've talked about. And this is really a lifelong journey. Yeah, totally. This, this is not something that's just done overnight. <laughs> it's a lifelong journey. Um, and it's and it's one that we get the privilege of, of going on um, with people. Uh, just as a reminder, I want you to just keep this in mind. And I mentioned this last week that you're always one step ahead of somebody. It's yeah, a good point. And I think that's a really yeah. good thing for us to remember. Like we're not all there. None of us have arrived right. in our journey with right. God. People have walked with God their whole lives. Yeah. None of us have arrived. Yeah. And so it's always important for us to realize that there's always somebody who God's placing in our path yeah. to be able to help on their journey and then their walk with God. So yeah. just remembering that. Um, we're, we're in this series called The Journey, right? Yeah. And we're talking about um, four components or yeah. four wheels, as we've been using the analogy. Come on. Four components of our life that all function together. And at River Valley, we call these the big four, which is know God, yeah. live for Free, discover purpose and make a difference yeah. and those are the big four and all of those things have to work in tandem with yep. one another it's huge. you can't leave any of them out but they all have to work together in order for us to have a full life yeah. uh, in Christ last week we talked about the first one which was to know God and we talked about how knowing God is reflected in how we're helping other people to get to know him, right? Today, we're talking about the second one, which is living free, yeah. which is really good news because we're gonna talk about how each of us yeah. have the ability yeah. to live free. Yeah, you know, God gave us a really clear example of all of this throughout scripture. And what, mm -hmm. probably one of the best examples he gave us of the big four yeah. was how he walked with the children of Israel, his people right. early on when they were in captivity in Egypt. Yeah. And uh, he had to come to them and reveal to them once again who he was and show his power, right? Um, and then he took them out of Egypt. He, he set them free. Yeah. He moved them out of their slavery in Egypt and then took them into the uh, to the desert. Yeah. And in the desert, there was, there, was a, there was a whole ordeal that took there where, where he really had to get Egypt out of them yeah. mm, and build in them yeah. to help them understand who they were in Christ, yeah. who they were yeah. in God, right? Yeah. And, and so we see the, the, the three stages there. And then they, they launch into the promised land and they get to live in making a difference in their life. And God, yeah. God really gave us this example for us mm. to, to, to see throughout Scripture. And we see this all over the New Testament. But I love what it said in Exodus chapter 20, verse yeah. 2. Here's what it says. It says, I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. And I, I just... 
Man, God could say that to us today. Yeah. It's the same thing in our lives. Like God rescued us from yes. our slavery yes. to sin. Yes. And he's setting our feet on a new and secure yeah. place. And that's really, really what we're discovering today as yeah. we talk about what it is to live free in our lives. So today we're uh, talking about the second wheel, right? We talked about the first one last week. We're talking about the second one. We got the Bronco out here again. We're at a shop actually out at the Bopes Ranch. And I just want to say thank you for to them for letting us come out and hang out. It's been a lot of fun the last couple weekends. Uh, but we are here. And, and the importance of what we're talking about today is the fact that on this Bronco, you need all four of these working in tandem. We talked about this, right? We talked about this last week, but it's really important for all these to work together. And today we're talking about living free and the importance of living free in our life and how it applies to all of these things working together. If you don't have freedom in your life, it's like having this incredible Bronco that has all its off-road capability. But, but imagine if it doesn't have all four wheels working. Imagine if you've got this third wheel and the air always goes out of it, right? And it just goes flat. You wouldn't be able to take this or do anything with it. Yeah, in fact, that's that's exactly one of the problems that we had with the Bronco <laughs> while we got new wheels and tires on because it did. It would it had one tire that would constantly go flat and, and it, it put us in a position where we weren't sure where we could go with it. Yeah, ooh, that's good. It was yeah. it was totally okay to like drive to the Maverick on the corner, <laughs> but you you didn't want to go to the mountains. You didn't right. want to go and use the power yeah. that it was designed for, yep. much like our lives. Yeah. Like God has has filled us with his Holy Spirit. He saved us. Yeah. He he sent us on this incredible journey. But too many of us are going on that journey with only three tires. Either that or three tires in <laughs> this. Like, I mean, you, you put this on here and, and it might work, kind of. But, I mean, the reality of being able to go on the adventure, the journey that right. God is taking us right. on. You're not going to be able to do that with this. I wouldn't want to go off road with this thing on it. Like if I could have this tire or this, shoot, I'm not going off. And the other thing I, is interesting about spare tires is they say that you're not supposed to go 50 miles an hour. Right. So if you've got the wrong thing, if you haven't experienced real freedom in your right. life, you're limited in the speed at which you can go. Yeah. Right. And and you might even think that you're able to function at full speed. Right. You might even think that without the understanding of, of areas where you need to live free in your life. You yeah. might even say, yeah. No, it's going good. Not right. able to function until you actually discover real freedom in your life. Are you able to go at the pace that God's actually designed for you to go at? It's huge. Or we do try and take it off road with this. Yeah. And all of a sudden we figure out very quickly yes. that our life, our vehicle yes. is not fully prepared for that. And, and a lot of our lives are that way, yes, right? Yes. We get into this journey. We embrace this reality of salvation. Yeah. We're so thankful for what Jesus purchased for us. We understand that once again, we've got the power of God living yeah. inside of us, but we haven't taken care of some of the things from our past. We're not right. living free from those things. Yeah. And so we're trying to off-road on a donut and we're figuring out very quickly that doesn't work. Yes. And so we get into these patterns in our lives where where we find success for a little while and then yeah. the tire goes flat. Yeah. And we're trying to drive off-road or we're trying to drive at 60 miles an hour down yeah. the road on a flat tire. Right. And, and everything falls apart right. on it. And that's really what we're talking about today yeah. is really learning how to live yeah. free in all these spaces of our lives. Maybe we yeah. have some unhealthy habits or mindsets or, or things from our past before uh, coming into relationship with Jesus, which would be all of us, that <laughs> is slowing us down. Yeah. And Jesus wants us to live free. He, he said, I came that you would have life and yeah. have it to the full. Like that's he good. wants us to be able to take and use the full capabilities of this life that he's right. given us. And, and a, a Bronco is your life. I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> right now. Uh, but the full capabilities of that, yeah. but you can't do it yep. with a flat tire. Yep. You can't do it driving on a donut. We yeah. desperately need to learn how to, and many of us are afraid of leaning into this, right. this space of living free right. because the biblical example for us kind of is something that makes us uncomfortable right. a lot of times. Right, right. Like we, we see that like in, in relationship both to Jesus and mm -hmm. to the disciples yep. and, and a guy named Paul, you know, yeah. we talk about all the time. Yeah. Jesus laid out the process for us to be able to find freedom yeah. in our life. 
And it's all centralized around people that help us to be able to do that, yeah. right? Jesus exemplified what it was to have patience with somebody in the journey right. of discovering freedom with Paul. Yeah. He did this. And then Paul turned around and did this with one of his disciples, a son in the faith named Timothy. And Paul talked about the great patience that God yeah. has with us. Yeah. And it's an important thing. So he talks about this in 1 Timothy 1 verse, verse, verse 15. And it says this. This is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and I am the worst of them all. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of the great patience with even the worst of sinners. That others would realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. Jesus really gave us the best methodology when it came to this place of how to find health and healing in our life. He actually modeled it for us really well in how he walked with the knucklehead disciples. Like we all make fun of them, but, but really Jesus showed us really what that looked like of, of how to be in relationship with one another so that we could grow in our own personal lives, yeah. but also so that we could help others take their next right. steps and, and walk together in that. Right. And that's really what we're taking a look at here is when we look at Jesus and look at his inter interaction with the disciples. I mean, Peter's a beautiful example, right? Like <laughs> Jesus was constantly walking with him in his stuff. Peter would make a mistake. And Jesus, in his love, just yeah. walked with him through it. Yeah, right. He didn't let him get away with it. He didn't excuse right. it. But but he walked with him through it. And yeah. I think the relational connection for us, and I think this is part of what we miss a lot in the body of Christ, is mm. how much we need each other. Right. And how integral that is to our actual health right. and growth in the body of Christ. Yeah. Uh, this process of living free begins in a very uncomfortable space for most of us, and that's in the space of confession, right? right, right. James chapter 5, verse 16 says this, and this is really, really the key here. It says, confess your sins to each other, pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The earnest prayers of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Here's the reality. We grow and are strengthened by those that are around us. Right. Yep. That's kind of a scary thought, thought sometimes mm. because... All too often I see people way isolated in their lives and you can tell very clearly they're not really growing in their faith either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Jesus put this principle in place because he wanted us connected relationally mm -hmm. together. He calls us the body, his body, mm -hmm. the body of Christ. And how important it is for us to be walking in relationship together. And, and without this component of humility, mm -hmm. right? If I'm going to confess my sin to you, uh, if I'm going to confess my sin to you, there has to be an attribute of humility that yeah. comes in that space that really sets up an opportunity for, for my life to find health and healing mm -hmm. in it. You know, you know, confession leads to repentance, <laughs> which breaks shame off of our life. Right. And the enemy loves to play in this space yeah. in us. He loves to yeah. get us to, to buy into the shame and the guilt feel. Right. But really what God is trying to draw us into is that place of health and healing in relationship right. with others where we're open and we're yeah. transparent, where shame doesn't get to have the last yeah. word in our lives. I've lived in that in my life where right. I was too ashamed to say something to somebody because I was afraid of what they were going to think about right. me. Right. Right. And the body of Christ, the church should be the place yeah where we are building relationships with one another yeah. that are grace-filled, but are also helping each other take healthy steps forward yeah. and not making excuses for our lives. And that's where yeah. that place of confession really comes in yep. and where we find true freedom yeah. in this experience that we have. And I think it's really cool too, you know, when I think about like even you, you, rec you, you, you mentioned Peter, um, Jesus with Peter. Jesus had the goal in mind for Peter's life, which was freedom. Right. It was complete freedom. Yep. That's the goal. When we talk yep. about confession, when we talk about the idea of, of bringing those things mm -hmm. to people who care about you, yeah. remember that the goal, what we're going for is freedom Come in on. your life. It's, a great it's not just you need to go tell somebody the bad stuff you do. Yeah. It's no, you need to find people around you who have the same vision in mm -hmm. mind that you do, yeah. which is there's freedom from your life, there yeah. or for your life. There's freedom from all the junk and yeah. all the filth and yes that begins with confession yeah. confession leads to this place of repentance which mm -hmm. this is also really really powerful Huge. because c confession is amazing 
But confession without any change, yeah. which is really what repentance is, yep. is pointless. Yeah. We talked about repentance this last week yeah, in we one one which was really cool. <laughs> right? It's crazy about, talking with my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Talking about repentance, and repentance is the idea of an actual 180 degree yeah. change yep. that takes place in our life. So confession is the verbalization of yeah. that, and repentance is the outworking of that yeah. in our life. But there's power yeah. in our repentance. This is what happens. This is this is uh, in Jeremiah 31, 34. And this was um, we. This was actually from the one to one app. It talks about the power of repentance, and when we repent, when we confess our sins, when we repent, yeah. this is what God does. Yeah. Jeremiah thirty one thirty four. Claim this because this is powerful. Come on, it's huge. This is God speaking, and I will forgive their wickedness, or I will forgive your wickedness. Yeah. And I will never again remember your Come sins. On. Not only is there forgiveness that happens when there's confession yeah. and then repentance that yeah. comes with that, but there's actually he forgets, yeah. physically Come forgets on. our sins. Yeah. There's, there's power in this thing, but that only works when we're actually tied and connected with other people, yep. right? Yep. Because this is where the confession, this is the repentance to one another yeah. and, and, and helping other people and ha- having other people help us to walk on this yeah. journey yep. of finding freedom in that yeah, area. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's huge for us. Simply put, uh, we need each other to experience the freedom that God has right. for us. Right. And I, I wish I could answer the question, why did God design it that way? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've thought about it so many times. People have asked me that question, right, and here's good. the reality. He's God. Yeah. He knew what we needed as people yeah, yeah. when it comes to, because repentance without humility, that it, it isn't going to happen, right? right? right. Uh, and the humility, the brokenness, the, the um, trust factor that it takes to walk in relationship with yep. somebody and, and to let your heart be laid open in that yeah. way is so huge. And it's not just about our sin. Right. It is about right. our journey. Right. It's about being in relationship with right. people and learning from their lives. Yes. And, and you and I both have had a yeah. bunch of people that we've yeah. uh, been able to journey with in life and, and different seasons, yeah. you know. Um, but a bunch of people that we've journeyed in life with that, that have helped us. Right. Um, whether it be a mentor yeah. or it's friends that we've, we've kind of journeyed yeah. with and they, they've been there helping us walk through seasons right. of life. Uh, man, I, I think back uh, into my teenage years and I have mm-hmm. a, a guy named Greg Heidman, yeah. incredible guy that, that really helped me take some steps forward in my faith. Right. Uh, it was this exact stuff right here, right? Living free. There yeah. were some areas in my life of pride and, and those things that I needed yeah. somebody who loved yeah. me enough to look at me and say, Tim, yeah. what are you doing, man? <laughs> and, and it was so good to have men like Greg and the yeah. Steve Gregors of my life and, and then some peers, some yeah. friends that I've yeah. walked through. And even up into today, we have great friends that we're, yeah. we're journeying in small groups with. Yeah. Um, that whether it's marriage or, or whatever platform that we're yeah. learning and growing in, like in order for us to find real freedom in our lives, we right. need some people to help us with that. You've right. experienced right. that. Yeah, and, well, and, and I like what you said too, because it isn't not necessarily just sin or freedom from those things. Right. It's freedom from mentalities and things like that. Yeah. One, one of the people that's spoken to my life, one of the, the greatest uh, greatest ways is a guy named Daryl Corbin, mm. who's, um, he was a, a pastor up in Centralia in Washington. Yeah. I interned with him my, my senior year. He's an okay guy. He's an okay guy, yeah. 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 Uh, he actually heads up all of the, the global stuff for Manor House, yeah. um, which we're a part of. And so he's just a great guy. But he, one of the things he did is helped me be able to start processing a different way of thinking mm. about things. Yeah. And I think that's a, a, a big part of yeah. thinking and having freedom yeah. is being able to not be bound with mindsets or ways of thinking yeah. about stuff, but actually having people that can help you break out yep. of that or offer a different way of yeah. thinking or challenge your thinking mm-hmm. so that you don't just stay in a rut right. of what you're of what you're constantly doing, right? right? And I think what you're saying is absolutely true. This is a mentor thing. This is a peer yep. thing. I've got friends, I know you do too, that we connect on a weekly basis yep, absolutely. where where we're, we're challenging each other. Yeah. And it's a constant back yeah. and forth, right? And it's that iron sharpening yeah. iron and Come there's on. freedom that's yeah. developing in both of our lives. Yeah. You know, when we talk iron sharpens iron, everybody thinks that the romantic, compo- like, that's cool. Men, <laughs> men are like, oh, it's tough. <laughs> but the reality of that is, is when iron sharpens iron, there's a tremendous amount of friction that takes yeah. place in that. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Heat's created. Yes. It's uncomfortable. Oh, man. Sparks are flying. Oh, man. But that is the reality of being in healthy relationships yep. together. And this is what Jesus was telling us. Listen, if you're going to actually live in freedom in your life, it is only going to come through the relationships that we right. have with one another, right. building healthy relationships yep. in life. Um, there, there's no escaping that in, in the body of Christ. And this is why the live free component is such a critical yeah. part. What yes. we were talking about earlier, that tire, like if, yeah. if that tire is too small, it's going to be a funky ride right. down that road. And too many people, and I've been in this boat, yeah. have had this this out of out of balance in their yeah. life where we, we didn't allow ourselves to be in healthy enough relationships with right. other people. And I, I just want to speak to you. Yeah. Maybe that's you yeah. today. Maybe you find yourself in, in some really lonely spots or by your choices. I, yeah. I made choices that way in my life. Right. Here's the beauty of the gospel is that it's a continuing work. Yeah. We talked about it at the yeah. beginning. This is a process yes. and a journey. Take Lifelong. your step today to lean into some healthy relationships. Yeah. Um, we're actually getting ready to do that in a totally different way through yeah. house church. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and it's going to be a, a totally different feel, but it's going to be amazing the relationships that it's going to be able to build yeah. for us and the opportunity that we're going to have to have some of these conversations in these spaces that yeah. really help us uh, mm-hmm. to move forward. Listen, here, here's, here's a reality for you. The devil doesn't want this for your That's life. Right. That's right. He doesn't want Absolutely. it for your life. He, he would much rather you live your life isolated mm-hmm. and, and in slavery, just mm-hmm. like the children of Israel were. Mm-hmm. Um, but that Jesus went to the cross and he died for us yeah. so that we could experience this fullness of relationship and right. life and wholeness that he has for us. But man, the enemy would love nothing more than to get you to believe the lie That's right. that you can do this on your own. That's right. It, it, has, right. it has been the lie told from the beginning of time, yeah. right? Adam and Eve tried to do their own thing. Right. And it just broke their relationship, mm-hmm. both with each other and then with God. Mm-hmm. And we've all experienced that. And so I just want to encourage you today, if you have that 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 tendency or that push and feel in your mm-hmm. life of, man, I'm, no, I'm, I'm just going to do this. On my, I, don't, I don't trust anybody. I don't want to talk right. to anybody. I just want you to understand the source of that in your life. Right. I want to be really clear that that is not the voice of God. Yep. Uh, God would draw you into relationship yep. both with him. Yeah. And with people around you. And so we really want to encourage you to do that. And I, I want to throw this in too. I know that there are, we probably actually all say this, that we've all been burned by relationships. Yeah. We've all had relationships with either people that have been mentoring yeah. us or peer relationships yeah. that, that have just gone bad. Yep. And, and we've got hurt yeah. with that. And sometimes that can actually cause us to hold back. Absolutely. And to not lean into relationship and to not try to, to, to build this relationship. Yep. But I want you to know that God, just like you said, God has designed us to yep. be in relationship. Yep. And there are healthy places yeah. to find relationship, yeah. and there are unhealthy places to Come find on. relationship. So true. And I, I want you to know that, that it, in in our church and in small group and in community. Yeah. This is a place where you can come and you can actually find healthy people yep. to be able to connect yep. with in life. And there's accountability, mm-hmm. and this is huge. There's yeah. accountability to people that speak into your life. There's accountability of relationship. But if God, uh, or if you have experienced hurt in the past from yeah. people, there is healing. Yeah, come on. There is healing. Exactly and God about. wants to bring healing to your life. Yeah. So that you can be free of those hurts, yeah. so that you then can have a relationship which helps you to be free of other stuff in yeah, your life. Yeah, come on. And and here's the reality: uh, you're never going to find a perfect place. Right. <laughs> here's Sorry. two very imperfect guys sitting right here. Sorry. Uh, but we can walk in relationship yeah. together, yeah. and we can be in small groups with people yes. that are on that on that same journey. Yes. Um, and again, it goes back to our goal, right? God, the goal is that God wants us to be free. Yeah. He wants us to experience that in life. And maybe you're watching today. Yeah. And uh, maybe you're, you're wrestling through some of this conversation just because you recognize you've never began a relationship right. with Jesus. You yeah. know, and never even started that space to, to experience the forgiveness that comes through yeah. the cross. Man, I'm, I'm feeling a little emotional right now. But <laughs> um, just that, that, yeah. that freedom that comes through knowing Jesus paid the price for your yeah. sin and mine. Yeah, yeah. And without that, we don't have any hope. Right. And what we're talking about today of living free is is a component, an outworking of beginning a relationship with Jesus right. Christ. And if you're watching today... Yeah. And maybe you haven't begun a relationship with him. I just want to take a moment mm-hmm. and let you know that can happen right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no elaborate prayer that we pray. There's no magic words that we say. It's just simply coming before Jesus. Mm-hmm. And he's listening to you right now and just saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Yeah. I acknowledge my need for you. Mm-hmm. My life is broken. And I recognize you as the healer and the Savior. And if that's you today, I just want to encourage you to just pause for a moment. Mm-hmm. And speak those words to Jesus. He's listening right now. He set this moment up for you to be able to connect with him. Why? Because he wants you 
to experience the freedom that comes through the forgiveness of sin and living a new life in Him. And so we just, we want to invite you into that place today. Um, we, we love this reality that no matter where we're at in our journey, whether we've been serving Jesus for a long time or today maybe you're just hearing about Him for the first time, that Jesus meets us right there in those yep. moments. Yep. And He has freedom for us in our yeah. lives. And so we want to take just a moment and pray for you all today mm -hmm. uh, that, that you would experience that to a whole new level. And specifically right. as we move into these new uh, kind of spaces for us as a mm -hmm. church uh, in the weeks ahead, mm -hmm. that we would all experience, I'm going to experience, Jason's mm -hmm. going to experience a greater degree of freedom in our lives because yeah. of the relationship yeah. uh, that we're going to have together. And I just want to pray that over you yeah. today because it is such an important part of this next season for us. Yeah. So Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that it's alive, Lord, that it is changing and transforming us. God, we thank you for today, God, and just talking about really the second part, God, of, of this series of learning how to live free and that, Jesus, you set a plan for us to do that in relationship with one another. And so, God, I pray as we head into this season ahead that our hearts would be wide open, God, to the work that you want to do in us, Lord. Lord, we recognize that our environment and surroundings are changing but God, that you remain the same yeah. and your desire for us remains the same. Yeah. Lord, that we would be set free. Lord, that we would live healthy lives right here and now, God, as we look forward to the beauty of eternity. So God, we just surrender ourselves to you. God, we thank you for this time together today. Lord, we pray as we launch into this new week ahead, Lord, that our hearts, Lord, would grow and expand in our love for you and our love for one another. God, help us to go out and to make a difference with our lives, Lord, this week, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, God Amen. bless you guys. Have an awesome week. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be right back here next week as we talk about mm -hmm. the third component of the big four yep. as we continue to press into all that God has for us as a church. God bless you guys. Have a great week.